If you want to participate, contact me at ordinarywomenpodcast at gmail.com. I'm sure you have great projects to brag about. You can also follow me and message me on Instagram at ordinarywomenpodcast, on Twitter at ordinarywomenpc, or on Facebook on the page Ordinary Women. Hello everyone, welcome to Ordinary Women and today I have Virginie with me. Hi Virginie! Hi! Thank you so much for being here and participating. Very excited to have you. Thank you! I can't wait to do this interview with you. Same, can't wait to hear what you're gonna talk about. Can you start by giving a quick introduction of yourself? Sure! So my name is Virginie, I'm from France, you may hear it by my accent. I am almost 25 and I'm kind of in the cultural and museum world. Yeah, basically it is. (laughs) Cool. And can you tell us something unusual about you? Actually, I thought about the fact that I am a highly sensitive person. So the HSP stuff, in French it is hypersensible but actually it's not so unusual because it's about like 15 to 20 percent of the population that is highly sensitive person but yeah i kind of feel it is part of my personality and who i am on my daily basis so i had to put that on yeah yeah definitely can you explain a bit what it means So when you are a highly sensitive person, it means that everything you feel, everything you experience or think or uh, live will be really intense. It can be translated in many, many forms. In my case, my senses are really developed. All the senses, even the touch, my resistance to pain too, or everything I think, everything I feel, I will cry in a lot of situations, even though it is happy or sad or when I'm angry or hungry too actually it's every time like I'm praying all the time but it doesn't mean I'm sad or weak or whatever it just means I'm having a lot of feelings and I just cannot express them in another way or unless I cry it's kind of weird but it's also in a way kind of a superpower because everything you experience, everything you live, it's really intense, but also in a positive way. And I, I know it makes me feel really, really happy and enthusiastic about a lot of things. I love everything I experience and I feel I have a lot of interest in everything. And it is, this is so great, actually. That's so cool. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And since here we talk a lot about being a woman, I would like to know, was there an event when you realized you are a woman? Well, actually, that's kind of weird because I couldn't find one, I think. I think, obviously, like most of the women I know and most of the women in the world, actually, I think our first period was one of the the most representative events concerning the fact that we were women. But in my case, I tried to remember and I couldn't really remember. Actually, what I remembered was the fact that I was different from men. Not the fact that I was a woman, properly speaking, but really the fact that we were different from men. For a lot of stuff, I remember my mother like freely telling me, oh no, Virginie, you shouldn't, for instance, say that kind of stuff because it is not good for a girl to say that like implicitly a meaning that boy could and I was always like but okay but what if I just want to act like a boy what if I just want to act like just like someone and just not necessarily like a woman or a girl at that time and I, I remember I was really pissed off I couldn't do the same stuff that boys do or did at that time, like playing a lot of video games or saying some stuff that couldn't be said by girls or playing the mud or I I don't know, a lot of stuff that was really reserved to boys and I felt so jealous about that. Oh yeah, that really sucks. Um, (laughs) Do you play video games now? Do you do now things that you were... Well, I think I do. It never prevented me to play video games, actually, because I did anyway. But I think I didn't play video games as much as my brother did, for instance. Mm-hmm. But now I just don't give a fuck. <laughs> I just play <laughs> for video you. games. And I play Pokemon, even though I'm a girl, and I just don't give a fuck. <laughs> yes. And all that kind of games that are said to be meant to be played by boys. 
And the contrary is true too. I mean, you can also play Alexandra Lederman if you are a boy. <laughs> yeah, completely. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, at least it didn't prevent you from. And did did someone actually prevent you? Like, we're talking about your mom. Like, for instance, did your mom ever say like, "No, I'm not gonna buy you this game because you're a girl, so you shouldn't play this." I mean, she didn't necessarily told me because something. Sometimes she just did things <laughs> without mm -hmm. me to know it. But yeah, I think she did. Or sometimes I think she also just didn't buy like. Or, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, I, I think also linked to the sports, you know, I think she made me go to like dance, swimming, ride a horse, and I really love that. But she never told me that I could do sports like soccer, football, martial arts, whatever. I didn't even know in a way that these sports could be practiced. Yeah, well, I hope that now that you know, you will do whatever you want. I guess like skating. When did you start skating? I began skating almost a year ago. I'm not so great at it yet because I don't skate a lot. But yeah, I really like it and I feel such a badass on my, skate on my yeah. skateboard, actually. <laughs> and I began to play football too again. Yeah, um, and that is so great because every time I like that a lot. I know it's stupid, but actually, when some people are talking about sports, I just cannot help it. I just say to people, especially if they are men, that I play football, and they're <laughs> like, "Really? Do you? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! So yeah." Bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah when i was playing football like same well or even now when i say oh i used to oh i used to play i played one year but like still you know and people especially men are always surprised by that Absolutely. i'm just like well yeah like it's also it's literally the most popular game in our countries like why mm -hmm. wouldn't i but yeah even today and like i'm talking about actual adults and i'm saying like oh yeah mm -hmm. i like football yeah. i'm like oh but you're I like it <laughs> yeah i find it both funny and annoying yeah, you know true. yeah yeah because you always have to explain and they kind of don't believe you and they're like yeah but did you really play yeah <laughs> like no i was cheap also is that the point <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but I really like it. So now it's kind of different. And since I understand the gap that exists between women and men, I just try to narrow this gap now. Like, I don't try to narrow it on a worldwide scale, but I mean, on my own scale, like with the people I, I know and my friends and family, I, I really try to narrow this gap, even though it's really hard because, I mean, it's just in our brains and you cannot just make it disappear like that. Yeah, completely. And as you were saying before, like, we've literally grown up like this. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. Changing a bit subject, did you grow up yeah. with any feminine role model? I guess not so many no, uh, not football so many. player, feminine mm -hmm. role model. But, yeah. yeah, nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I try to remember, and I think the only women I considered, if I can say so, as models at the time were fictional characters. So okay. it says a lot about who I admired because I couldn't <laughs> find a proper figure to admire, actually, I think since I had to pick some fictional characters, but these mm. characters were some pretty cool and badass girls too. <laughs> Tell us more. Yeah. I want to hear more. Yeah, well, actually, I think it is really common, but I really, really liked and loved, and it is still the case today, Mullen. I'm so in love, actually, with that character, and still today, I think it's one of my favorite movies. I really, really like her because she's so... So, see, she's such a badass and she's fearless. I mean, you know, even though she's fearless, brave, strong and determined, and she has a dragon pet, and even though... The, yeah, even though the she, <laughs> Yes. It, even though all that, she's still sensitive. Like, she's a sensible mm. person. Yeah, like, there are some scenes, you know, I don't know if you really remember the, the, the movie, but Not there is a scene she, she, find, she, she just finds a, a doll. And the doll actually belongs to a small girl that got killed 
we guess she got killed by the bad guy. And this is such a sad scene and Mulan just takes the door and she just drifts a little bit and then she leaves. And it, it's really important to me because, I mean, it's not because you are sensitive and because you feel a lot of things and feel sadness and, and stuff that you cannot be brave and accomplish a lot of things. Yeah, this is so true. And on the contrary, like, it is normal to have emotions and if you don't express your emotions, well, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> that's my line. True. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. And so what did you learn from Milan? Actually, I think it's the same that I just told you, that you really can be someone with a lot of feelings and in the same way being really smart and friendly and helpful and fearless and, yeah, with a great mind. And this is just one and only person right now and she's this whole stuff, she's mixing it together and she's, yeah, she's a badass. Yeah, and so complete. It's yep, so absolutely. great. She's great. And do you currently have female role models? I think I have some. I think I really look for models that are just true. And women want women to be true to themselves. Like I, there is a woman on, on Instagram who is French. Her pseudo is uh, my better self. I don't know if you know her. Vaguely, yeah. Yeah, and she really is a great person because she really in the like an empowerment of yourself, but in a way that you don't have to accomplish great stuff and great projects and be in a really great shape and eat like in a really healthy way every day or anything like that to succeed and to be yourself and to be true to yourself. And it's really inspiring because I feel like there was a great trend about the fact that you should wake up earlier and eat in a better way and do more sport if you could and walk a lot every day and stuff just to feel good and to to live in a good way and to live a good life and i don't think it is a way in which everyone has to live because in my opinion i really need to just enjoy life and just stop asking myself questions and this is what I did. And I think I'm really grateful for this kind of person to exist on Instagram because she really makes me reconsider certain choices. And the fact that now if I want to eat a pizza, I just eat my pizza. And if I just want to watch this movie, even though I had to go to my sport practice, I just go watch this movie and everything like that. And I just do things that make me happy. And I think it's really the mind before the body. And yeah, it gets me a lot. Yeah, I really like that type of thinking as well. Actually, a few months ago, I don't know if I told you, uh, but I read this book called How to Do Nothing, uh, Resisting okay. the Attention Economy. Uh, it was a bit less political and economical than I would have liked it to be and more philosophical. But yeah, anyway, and she was talking about the fact that because of capitalism, because capitalism tells you that if you don't do something, you don't have value, which is not true. As human beings, we do have value just by existing. But capitalism tells you that now you don't. Uh, very interesting. But yeah, I kind of hate self-help books for that because I'm always like, well, no, I don't necessarily want to wake up at 6 a.m., because yeah. you know, I want to sleep and I want to wake up and be happy. I don't necessarily want to be super productive 24-7 yeah. and that's okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I think everything that we have to remember about that is that we just don't have to feel guilty the same way that we did before. I know it's my case and I really try not to feel guilty for everything actually. Before that I used to, to feel guilty for everything if I just didn't follow my, my diet or if I didn't do my sport. Anything. And it made me feel so bad when I didn't and now I'm just free of guilt and I feel so mm. much better actually. <laughs> yeah, completely. 
Yeah, so yeah, I'm really happy now to be in this kind of mood because I think, yeah, I didn't get it first. Now I, mm. I try to get it because it's hard, again, yeah. in, the, in our society to just live this way. But I think it's really, really helpful. And then you are so grateful for a lot of things that you weren't before and it feels so great, actually. Yeah. Oh, that's so great to have yeah, someone who can inspire you in this way. That's so great if you learn from that. Yeah. And do you have any other feminine role model at the moment? Well, actually, I think I have some on Instagram too, but they are more like creative people. There is this woman, I admire her so much. She's named Pedro Menta on Instagram and she is a model in a way. She's doing like great photo shoots. She's always acting in a really um, atypical way. I mean, her photos, are, her shoots are so, so great. It's not like everything you hear, you are used to see. She really inspires me in an um, artistical way. And there is also another woman and the account is Juniper Fox and it's about the fox, but it's also about the woman who like lives with this fox, with Juniper, and uh, actually she lives with a lot of animals and foxes and possums and uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, animals. And she's just so gentle and so nice. And she's like incarnated tenderness, actually, I think. And I love her so much. Oh, I'll go check her out. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of wholesomeness. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Talking about less wholesome things, <laughs> how did the lack of representation of women in society impact you? Actually, I don't really know. I never asked myself this question before, I think, because I just tried to, like, my models were some women, but there were also a lot of men, actually, because I thought I could do the same. So I didn't ask, yeah, I didn't ask myself nice. a lot of questions. Yeah, actually, it's okay, yeah. But yeah, today I'm really like, ah, uh, gosh, it's getting better, but we still have a long path before us. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. I think you know what time of the podcast it is. It is yeah. time to stop talking about other people and to start talking about only you. Oh. <laughs> So, what project do you want to talk about today? Well, actually, I wanted to talk about my professional project, which kind of was modified over time. When I got to high school, to the university, I first began to study English for five years. I kind of liked it and kind of hated it at the same time because I've always loved English, but it was really hard for me. I really uh, struggled getting there and I didn't really see where it was leading me. Because when you are doing, as I did, a research master, you cannot do a lot of things after that. You either get the chance to teach at a great level, like uh, in the universities or stuff, or you have to do more research. I didn't want to do either of them, so it was kind of a problem. And at the same time, I, I got the chance to leave to Rome for a year during my bachelor. And during this year, I just began to observe the fact that I got really interested by guiding people all over the places and just talk about a lot of things that happened on these places and just tell stories and stuff. And I really liked that. And when I got back to Lyon, where I live, I had to submit a project for after my studies. And I was kind of lost. And a teacher heard about the fact that I really liked to guide people. And he told me, but you know, there is this special courses that is uh, provided by the exact same university that you are in right now. And I was like, really? And he was like, yep, yeah, really. <laughs> and so <laughs> after my master, so after my five years of English studies, I actually got in this new year of study it was just one year but i got in i passed the exam and we was like a really really small year group so it was so nice to practice and study all of us mm -hmm. i would have studied during this year 
was to learn how to guide people, how to do guided tours, what to tell and how to tell stuff and where to find all the stuff I had to, to tell people. And it was really, really interesting and we had a lot of courses about arts, architecture, culture and paintings and stuff. And it was really, really, really interesting. It was just so intense because everything was condensed in just one year, even not actually in some month, because after that we have to do an internship. And I got in a museum and it was so, so great. I began to feel what I really wanted to do. And it was that. I really wanted to guide people to do guided tours. And yeah, so that began two years ago. And now I'm still doing this kind of job. So I'm really proud of myself because if I look at five years before that, I think I wouldn't have been able to see how at ease I would have been today. And actually, it is the case. So I'm so, so proud of myself. Yeah, that's very cool. And you definitely should be proud of yourself for that. Is it the main thing you're proud of? Like, are well, there actually, any other reasons why you're proud of yourself for doing it? I'm really proud because when I was in school, I hated when I had to do some presentations like... Really? Yeah, yeah, in front of the, the whole class. I hated that. I was so scared and I just couldn't stand it. And it is so strange because as long as there is a subject I'm funded to, then it just goes away. I would lie to you if I told you that I am not anxious before my first guided tours every time I had a, I have a new subject or in whenever I'm in a new museum or a new place and that I have to present myself and stuff. But it just goes away really fast and I really, really enjoy that because a few years ago it was so different, so different and I hated that and I was really, really not at ease at all. And today I'm like so proud of myself because everybody, even people that I don't know, just cheer me up. They just all cheer me up. Like saying, like, you're so great, you are so meant to do this today, you are so interesting, and it feels so great and empowering, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's so great. Such a great thing to be proud of. I think when you like what you say, it makes a really huge difference. Yeah, definitely. Actually, there is another thing that I'm really proud of because it is so surprising and I wasn't really sure about it at first. It's the facility I have to remember what I have to say. Like, if you tell me and every time I get scared first but then it's okay. I mean, if you tell me that I have to learn a whole tool, like one hour two for the day after, I will be so scared first but because I will be like, but how do I learn all that in just one day? And actually I will do it and the next day I will be totally able to do it and just guide people and talk with them for one hour on a subject I just didn't really know about the day before. I'm so surprised about that because it's really new. It's a new skill I have now because I didn't have it before and I'm really, really proud of this one actually. <laughs> Yeah, that's such a good skill to have. Yeah, definitely so much to be proud of. That's so great. And so how long was there before, like, when you first thought about it and when you actually started doing something about it? But actually, it was really quick because when I first thought about that stuff, well, so uh, when I was in Rogam, it was in 2000 and, yeah, 16, 17. And then I just got back to Lyon. I think I heard about this practice here, like right at the same time. And then I just finished my master and then I got in. So I think it was just all in the same, yeah, in, in the flow. Everything was in the yeah. same flow, I think. And I'm very grateful about that because I didn't have any gap, you know, and everything mm. was so smooth and I'm so lucky about it. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. And how did you actually do do it? Like what steps did you have to take? So there was a kind of entrance exam. Actually, it was kind of a hard and complicated part of my life. So I have to pass this exam about art, like the history of art, but I didn't learn anything about that like never and I didn't know anything about it. And it was so hard because I had to learn everything from A to Z in just a few months. And at the same time, I was writing my thesis. 
So it was so, so complicated because I mean, oh I God. was, yeah, I was totally overwhelmed and it was really hard. It was really a harsh time of my life. And I think I was kind of depressed at that time. And at the same time, I was working in the restaurant. So yay, <laughs> great stuff. Stuff happening that there. Intense. <laughs> yeah, it was it was insane actually. And so yeah. yeah, I had to learn everything about that. And there was this exam and it was really hard, but I managed to be okay since I got in. I'm really proud of myself about that too, because I think we were like so so many to just apply to take the exam. And at the very end we were 14 in the final group, like just taking the year actually. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was totally worth it. Mm. And what kept you going? I think it's the fact that I just realized I really had something I cared about. I mean, I was so, so happy to finally find something that was just make me happy and determined and I really wanted to get it done. Oh, yeah, it's so important to be motivated. Yeah, and it was like the first time in a very long, long time and I think it was really about it. It was about time, actually. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And was there any figure that had an impact on it? As I guess your teacher, the one who he, told you? I think, yeah. I think if this teacher wasn't there at the good time, because the timing actually was perfect, because I was just talking about that with a friend, and he, the teacher, heard me, and he was like, you know, this exists, this, like, year kind of a bachelor, actually, in a one-year bachelor, and he was like, you know, that exists. But actually, I wasn't talking to him at all, so yeah, I'm really, really happy and grateful he was that there at the exact same time. But I didn't have any model for this kind of field, I mean, concerning guided tours and tour guides, I didn't know anybody who was doing that before and it was really, really new for me. So I just, I was my own model, actually. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Maybe you'll be the model for the next person who wants to do that. Yay! Okay. <laughs> mm, that's very cool. Yeah, but I've realized over time that it's so important to talk about the things you do just because there's always someone who can help you in yeah. any way, like have the next great idea or know the person who does something like that. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Kind of serendipitous moment. Yes, absolutely. So cool. And what challenges have you faced? So I guess, well, at the beginning, like the workload that you had to face. But once yeah. you enter... Or well, like even all the things before you enter, what challenges did you, did you face? Actually, these weren't the hardest ones. I think the hardest challenge, and it's still the case today, is the imposter syndrome. So the imposter syndrome is when you think you're doing something that is not necessarily good and you think that the position you have is not really deserved, that you don't deserve what you earn in a way. Yeah, you don't deserve what you have, yeah. Yeah, it's weird because, I mean, I work for that and I, I know I'm good because everyone is telling me I am, but I cannot help myself but think that I maybe I'm not as good as I pretend and yeah. Yeah, that sucks um yeah, <laughs> that i don't know you will not feel that way i don't actually know now i want to look about that because i have no idea where that comes from yeah uh, actually yeah, i think it's so... just a, a lack of confidence and stuff mm, I, I think it's all about that probably yeah but yeah in a way it's kind of difficult to work with that kind of feelings when you are working directly with public i mean i'm always working talking directly to the people i have to work with the, the public mm. the clients and yeah sometimes i just uh, like doing my tour what i'm talking i'm like in in my mind there was this little voice which goes like but are you sure about what you're saying is it really worth it <laughs> are you are you okay with that <laughs> did you did you check your sources okay well <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of a problem, but yeah, it's, I think it's really connected to a lack of confidence and self-confidence, but mm. yeah, issues. <laughs> yeah, and did you, like, do you have any, any tips or like, do you do anything to overcome this? 
Actually, I think I just try and listen more to people talking to me and saying basically that they really find my speech very good and I just listen to people. Sometimes they are just right about you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> In my case, I'm really lucky because I get to know everything that people think about myself at the, the time I'm over with my tour because it's this kind of job in which you really have a, a connection with the public when you are working behind a computer and just answering some emails or stuff yeah there is nobody that is going to send you an email and say yeah you are doing an amazing job thank you so much for I don't know uh, uh, selling this cell phone to my husband no there is no such things and it's not the same for me because people are actually coming to me and saying like yeah it was so great and I learned so many things and you really live for what you say and it's so great and you are such a happy person and it was so nice to have you today I think I'm so lucky to have all that because it really, like, it flatters me a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's so rewarding. That's so great, honestly. Yes. And keeping on the positive things, what was easier than you thought would be? Well, I think everything, actually. I think I'm, like, all the professional field, the career stuff, and everything leading to jobs and, yeah, the professional world, all that scared me a lot. I was really, really anxious about that before. I remember that even two years ago, I really didn't want to leave the university and to be over with the university because I just didn't want to step in the professional world. But then, now that I found a field in which I'm really, really happy and enthusiastic, and, and I'm so happy to do this job now, I feel like everything is easy, actually, because I just like what I do. I'm so in love with that job in which I get to make people learn about new things, and at the same time, I do learn about them too, because I think it, it really is a good compromise between be over with my studies and having a job since I just have to study every time I have to do this job because every time I have to create or to do or to lead a new visit or a new tour I just have to learn about it so now everything is complete I'm so grateful about that Ah, uh, that's so great. That sounds like the dream. And it sounds like you're very happy. And that's Yeah, I am. So I'm really, hear. really happy with that. And I can't wait to see where it's leading me because I know I get to have a lot of opportunities. Ah, uh, that's so great. Yeah, definitely. That's so, so many great things to hear. Thank you so much. Um, you know I don't think I have any more questions, but maybe you, maybe there is something else you wanted to say about this or about something else? Well, actually, there is something I just wanted to point. There is nothing to do with all that we've talked about right now. No. But actually, even though I'm having such a great time with my, my current job, there are some times in which things can go down and it is my case I just quit my job in which I was so happy because I didn't have a good relationship with my my boss and I just wanted to say that it is okay and that I just felt it inside and that I just wanted to share it with you because I think it is really important to separate what you have in your mind and what you really need I mean, in my case, I just thought this was my dream job and I just worked for them for like one month and I actually felt like really it was my in my inst instinct and my intuition told me that I couldn't stay there because it was toxic, it was bad, there was no gratitude at all. I got really anxious about all this atmosphere and, and, and I wasn't alone actually because my colleagues told me about that too. So yeah, I decided to leave even though it was really well paid and it was a stable situation and it was in my city, it was about a uh, something that I really like to talk about and yeah and I left 
So I just want any pity or what, but I just wanted you to know that it is okay and that you really have to listen to yourself. And even though people, some people told me that it was stupid and that I just had to get myself together, I really think I did the greatest choice and that your mental and moral health is really, really has to, to come first, actually. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And yeah, I definitely think you did the right choice there. Your mental health must be prioritized. And what's the point of working with that type of people? Like, Absolutely. nothing good will come out of it. So yeah, there is no point. Congratulations on living, honestly, because I think that's brave. And also, like, you have a new job. That's actually quite inspiring. Or, like, very inspiring, you know? Yeah. You're not happy, you decided to quit, and now you're doing something better. I also think it's really for the best. And the other thing I wanted to talk about, it's in the same vibe, is that is the fact that you should go see a psychologist even though you shouldn't feel the need to. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if I'm clear. I mean, yeah, uh, I just got a new appointment and now I'm just going to uh, see a, a psychologist again. And I'm so oh. happy about it. Yep, in December. And I'm really, really happy about it because I did before for some years and then I didn't uh, because, you know, money. And <laughs> then I realized I really needed that because I don't feel like I'm not just trying to, to kill myself every night or whatever and I don't feel so bad or whatever. But I feel like I think my mental health is really important and that I need to meet the professionals that are working about that. And as you would go and see a doctor, if your foot aches, yeah, you also have to go and see a psychologist sometimes. And even though you think everything is good in your life and stuff, I really think it's really important to, to get used to go see an, a psychologist. And everybody according to me, really should try to do so because we just put it aside and I don't think it's so good. It is really good. I mean, yeah, you really have to check it out sometimes. Yeah, and check that as you would do a checkup on your body. Absolutely. Do a checkup on, on your mental health. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And I would add also that for so many people who talk about quite important mental health problem, a thing that comes back all the time is the fact that they wouldn't uh, feel legitimate at first because mm -hmm. other people are having it worse or like things like that. Um, but yeah, that's not a thing. Like even if some people, sure, there will always be worse, but that doesn't mean that you can't get better and you can't get help and yeah um 100% agree with that so to everyone listening go get your appointment <laughs> yay <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> Well, thank you so much. We are reaching the end of our episode then. Um, thank, you. thank you so much for, for coming and talking. That was so, so interesting. Yeah, thank you very much for being here today. Thank you. And as the guest of the podcast, you have the very last word. The mic is yours. My last word will be a sentence, actually. It is to enjoy all the little things. <laughs>